welcome back everyone to section number five. In the first video, we talked about how to use the substitution rule on indefinite integrals. Now we're gonna be talking about how to use the substitution, <laughs> substitution rule on definite integrals. So things that actually have bounds. So that's why we have the name right definitely here. So again, we're gonna upgrade. Uh, and use our substitution rule to include definite integrals. And of course, we're gonna try this for a few more problems, right? Not just the theory, but actually some applications here. Okay, so again, it's suppose now that we have a nice definite integral, something along the lines as the integral from a to b of f of g of x times g prime of x dx, right? And so again, g prime is a nice continuous function on a to b, f is continuous on the range, right? And so in this case, this will be equal to the integral of, again, some f of u du, but now that we're integrating with respect to u, we have to change the bounds, right? Because these bounds back here, this a and this b, these were x values. But if I want to integrate with respect to u, I should have u values here. So how do I get u values? Well, I plug them into my g, right? Because my g is kind of this transfer rate. It transfers x values, which you input in here, and it outputs u values. So let's see, the lower limit of integration would be g of a, right? What happens when you feed a into the g function? Well, it spits out the u value, g of a. And then the upper bound of integration will be g of b. Again, I'm feeding in b, the x value b, into this function, and it spits out the u value, g of b. Okay, and for those of you who have, may have seen this before, you say, okay, do we really need to change the bounds? Can I just solve out the indefinite integral, then plug in those x values for the original function? Yes, that does work, but this remark right here says, right, once you kind of make your way into calc two, when you actually start doing trig substitutions and things like this, right, it becomes much more useful to have this method. And consequently, right, a lot of our homework actually forces, right? So that web work homework will actually force you to do this, where you change the limits of integration. So I will show you both methods here in this first example, uh, but I just want you to be familiar with this method where you actually change the bounds, because again, this becomes more useful later on, and you'll have to do it in your homework now, because again, we know it becomes more useful later on. So let's go ahead and try to solve this first example, again, using this method. So the first thing I need to identify is what should my u be, right? So what should my u be? So I'm going to do u is equal to, and usually it's right this innermost function, right? Whatever's on the inside. So I'm going to try 1 plus 7x because I see that that's on the inside of the cube root. Okay, so then du is going to be equal to, let's see, 7dx. Or that's the same thing as du over 7 is equal to dx. So now I'm set to go ahead and do my normal changes here. So let's see, this is going to be the cube root of u. And then instead of dx, I'm going to go ahead and trade in a du over 7. And now really the new thing for definite integrals is that I also need to switch this 1 and this 0 to write u values. So for instance, if I wanted to switch the x value of 0 to a u value, well, I'm going to go ahead and plug in 0 everywhere I see an x here. So let's see, x equals 0 corresponds to u equals, and so if I plug in 0 everywhere I see an x, I get, let's see, 1 plus 0, so that's going to be 1. So x equals 0 corresponds to u equals 1. So the corresponding u value here is 1. Again, I'm just plugging in 0 into that function. Next up, the x value of 1. What does that correspond to? Well, if I plugged in 1 into this function here, I would get, let's see, 1 plus 7, that would be 8. So that would give me the u value of 8. So this should be the integral from 1 to 8 of the cube root of u. So, okay, let's go ahead and maybe rewrite this a little bit here. So I'm going to factor out the 1 7th, and I'm going to do the integral from 1 to 8 of u to the 1 third power, right? That's the same thing as the cube root. And so now let's take the antiderivative. And so let's see, I'm going to have u to the 4 thirds power. I'm going to multiply by 3 fourths here. So that's the reciprocal of the new exponent here. And then I'm going to evaluate from 1 to 8. And now again, these are u values. So I'm going to go ahead and plug them, them in for u. So let's see, I have 3 twenty eighths. And if I plug in 8, 8 raised to the 4 thirds, 
Well, let's raise it to the one third power first, right? So eight to the one third, or the cube root of eight, that's two. Now take two and I raise it to the fourth power, that's going to be 16. Minus one raised to the four thirds power, well, that's not so bad, one raised to any power, one. So 16 minus one is going to be 15. So this is going to be 45 28 as my final answer. Okay, and again, I know there's this other method out there, um, and that's fine to use, but I'm not going to be pushing it, kind of, right? I'm going to be using this kind of for the other problems, for quizzes, for exams, stuff like that, because again, it becomes more useful later on, and it's consistent with our homework. So this is really the method that I'm going to be pushing, where we actually transform our bounds, our zeros and our ones, right, to these new limits, our U limits here. Okay, so let's go ahead and try one more here. One more example. Again, I would recommend at this point, pause the video, try this out, get as far as you can, and then I'll go ahead and spoil the surprise. Go. All right, so this is as far as I've made it. Right, I went ahead and chose the U value of X squared because I saw it was on the inside. Right, so then I went ahead and I calculated out this differential, DU was equal to 2X DX. And then I divided by two on both sides, right? Because I saw that I have an X and a DX. So I'd like to trade those in for so many DUs. And when I do that, right, I perfectly get rid of all of my X's, right? So everything is now in terms of U. The last step, because this is a definite integral, I need to go ahead and change my bounds. So for instance, when X is equal to zero for this lower limit of integration, what is the corresponding U value? Well, if I plug this into my equation, zero squared is equal to zero. So this corresponds to actually the same value, zero. How about when X is equal to root pi? Kind of a silly value, but that's my upper limit of integration. Well, when I square that, right, this gives me the U value of pi. So that's actually pretty nice. So this is going to be the integral from zero to pi when I switch these over to my U values. All right, so I factor out the one half here. And when I integrate cosine, again, with respect to U, I'm going to get sine of U. And I need to evaluate that from zero to pi. So when I plug in pi for U, or when I plug in zero for U, kind of either one of these cases, you get out zero. Right, the sine of pi is zero, minus sine of zero is zero. So this just gives out the value zero. And so this is our final answer. But if you're anything like me, you say, well, that's pretty remarkable that it's exactly zero. And so we can go ahead and check this, right, with our technology. So I went ahead and I graphed this function, x cosine of x squared, here in our Desmos application. So x cosine of x squared, and I restrict it to just between zero and root pi. So this is the function right here, again, just from zero to root pi. And then I went ahead and I shaded all of kind of the positive area green and all the negative area red. And the claim is, right, that this green area and the red area are perfectly equal, right? They cancel each other out, and that's why we have that this net area, that this definite integral, yields the answer zero. So I'm happy now, once we kind of have this graph, I am now convinced that yes, zero is the correct answer, and we didn't make any mistakes. All right, so that's it for this video and for our definite integrals using the substitution rule. Uh, we got one more video for you. I'll see you then.